Hello and welcome to a new video. Round 3 of CCC11 has started a couple of days ago. And here are the participants and the standings after about 32 rounds. Lila is first ahead of Stockfish and Lilenstein. We have only draws so far between the first three. And in sixth we have Scorpio who became very very strong lately after switching to neural network for evaluation. Scorpio managed to, to get into the elite of computer chess after that, so kudos to Daniel Shaou, the developer of Scorpio. So today we have a game played between Lila and Scorpio. We have a Karo Khan, which started with e4, c6, d4, d5, and now knight d2. Usually e5, the advanced variation of knight c3, is played here, but we have knight d2. Now, of course, if black chooses to take on e4, then we transpose back to, to the main lines of the Karo Khan. But in this one, instead we have g6, which is a, a bit of a, a sideline in the Karo Khan. We have now c3, bishop g7, knight f3, and now this weird looking move, knight h6. Now here in this position of the knight f3, black already has to make some decisions and some uh, planning to do here about how to uh, develop the pieces and how to make this bishop on g7 work because uh, there is this wall of pawns in front of that bishop. And usually black strikes at white center with c5, but here it's very difficult to do that since uh, this pawn on d5 is not defended by e6. And the black could try to play here e6, but then this bishop is locked in and uh, white could already attack black's kingside structure here with h4. This is very effective when black deploys the kingside pawns like this. h5 here is already a strong attack. And the problem here for black is that knight f6 trying to stop this doesn't work because of e5. And the knight has to go if it goes to d7 then uh, white can just simply continue with h5 and once h5 is in white is constantly threatening to take on g6 and open the h file or h6 even so black has a very hard time castling here and white's position is much better he also has more space so e6 is is not that great here now if knight f6 immediately then of course it runs into e5 and again this is not so great for black these pieces are now uh, locked in and uh, this idea with h4 h5 could still come this has actually been played before with bishop d3 and so on but it's not very attractive for for black he could try instead of knight f6 he could try maybe to take here first but this is also not great because now after knight f6 white can play knight g5 and uh, already threaten stuff like uh, taking on f7 this knight is very aggressively placed and the point is that h6 doesn't work so well here for black because of knight takes on f7 and the knight e5 check winning a second pawn for the piece and uh, this would be also very very good for white this rook is also attacked the light squares in black's camp are very very weak and um, white is only a pawn down for the piece and it's attacking this rook rook h7 for example would fail already uh, because of bishop d3 so this would be again very very good for for white so d takes on e4 is not that attractive and neither is knight f6 so black's idea here is to play knight h6 and then f6 and strike at white center with e5 while uh, keeping the d5 pawn defended by the c6 pawn we have now bishop d3 and after castles we reach the end of the book and here lila also castled and now we have f6 continuing with the plan of striking with e5 we have rook e1 knight f7 and now lila played h4 this idea with h5 still works very very nicely lila's idea is to play h5 and weaken this diagonal and especially the g6 pawn which then uh, could also be targeted with the knight from h4 we have now e5 and taking any of these central pawns is not that great for white because black can just replace it with uh, another pawn and black would have a central majority in the center which would be good also if the pawn takes here uh, the f5 would open up for this rook so that's not very good instead we have h5 lila continuing to weaken g6 we have now g takes on h5 
what else can black do here if he ignores the threat then uh, lila would take here and then also take on on d5 and then pick this pawn up either with the bishop or with the knight of the knight h4 and playing g5 also not very good because this diagonal would still be weak and maybe lila could play something like uh, bishop back and then queen c to create a battery and try something on h7 so instead we have pawn takes on h5 at least winning a pawn but now comes knight h4 targeting these squares bishop g4 now and here it's very interesting a very tricky move because f3 here would be losing for white because of f5 a very nice move striking at this knight on h4 which doesn't have squares to go to and the point is that if now pawn takes on g4 then black can play pawn takes on e4 first and if now this bishop moves of course then the queen takes the knight and black has a dream position a dream attack here the f file is opened up uh, black also gained the e5 square a knight or a bishop can go there after these pawns are exchanged and uh, <clears throat> black's attack is just very very strong here this would be a dream position for black but instead of uh, f3 lila played here bishop e2 but now we still have f5 this is still a, a good idea for black but now we have knight takes on f5 bishop takes on f5 pawn takes on f5 and uh, lila now won back the pawn temporarily and uh, now pawn takes on d4 trying to win another pawn works here for black but first we have knight d7 and after bishop takes on h5 we have now pawn takes on d4 equalizing the the pawn count but it looks like that now after c takes on d4 here uh scorpio can play queen h4 here again very very good move attacking this pawn twice and it looks like he will win another pawn he's also threatening knight f6 hitting this bishop and then knight e4 taking back on d4 would allow black a lot of activity so instead of actually taking on d4 in this position lila played knight f3 just ruling out queen h4 all together and just giving up another pawn we have now d takes on c3 and again pawn takes on c3 would allow a fork uh, on these rooks so lila just gave up another pawn played rook b1 here she just wants to activate her pieces as soon as possible and uh, those pawns don't really count that much if now c takes on b2 then after bishop takes bishop takes and rook takes b7 would be hanging and after knight d6 defending both b7 and also attacking f5 black pawns here on the queen side look very very nice but it's white actually who's doing the aggression here in this position since this king now is uh, very weak after knight d4 lila would be threatening here knight e6 forking some pieces there's also queen g4 and actually taking this pawn on f5 is not really possible because of the back rank scorpio would be losing after rookie a check so c takes on b2 not really good instead we have knight c5 and now after pawn takes on c3 we have knight e4 hitting this pawn now twice with both bishop and knight lila now took on b7 and now we have knight d6 hitting the rook and also hitting this pawn and it doesn't look like the rook has many good options b6 is taken away b5 if rook b4 then a5 uh, if rook b2 then bishop takes on c3 if rook b1 then knight takes on c3 so it looks like c3 square is the only good square for the rook but the rook being attacked on p7 is only half of the problem here for white because uh, there's also f5 hanging scorpio is threatening here rook f5 hitting this bishop for example if rook goes to b3 then after rook f5 and bishop to g4 knight f2 is very strong hitting this queen and if the king takes the knight then queen h4 check is strong since this knight is now pinned uh, black would be picking up that bishop so this wouldn't be so great for white instead of rook b3 though lila saw all this happening and she continued with rook takes on g7 giving up the exchange with tempo we have king takes on g7 and now knight d4 threatening a family fork on e6 so we have now queen h4 uh, saving the queen from that threat and also attacking f2 
But now we have queen g4 check, forcing the queen exchange, and now this pawn is defended twice. We have rook f6, and now f3. And this knight doesn't really have many good squares to go to. Taking on c3 would be a blunder because of bishop b2. And once this knight moves away, knight e6 check, picking up this rook would be very, very good for white. And instead of knight c3, maybe knight c5. And this is the second best move according to Stockfish. Here white can play rook e7 check. And then after rook f7, continue with bishop g5 and so on. But instead of knight c5, uh, Scorpio played and Lila also expected here in this position knight g3. They both thought that this is the best black can do, at least attack this pawn on f5 twice. But now we have bishop f4 hitting both knights. We have one knight taking on f5, but now after bishop d4, Lila is winning the exchange on f6. We have now knight takes on d4, pawn takes, h5, bishop d7. And now after rook d8, we have king h2 attacking the knight. Rook takes on d7, king takes on g3. And now rook f7, a4, a5, rook c1 attacking c6 now. And we have king g6 getting out of the pin. Bishop takes, rook takes, and rook c5. And we reach this very interesting endgame where Lila will pick up this pawn on a5 and we'll have an extra pawn. But winning is actually not that easy because black has some very, very interesting ideas for counterplay. After taking this pawn on a5, Lila has a, a very simple plan of just pushing this pawn in. She will just play rook a8 and then a5, a6, a7. And then it will try to, to get out of the way with the rook, if possible with tempo, and then just uh, promote the pawn. So black doesn't have much time here, he needs to act quickly. And there are two strategies that black can uh, follow here in order to try to save the game. One of them is to, to try to get rid of this a4 pawn, but that's very, very difficult to do because while black goes to the queen side with rook and king in order to capture the a4 pawn, Lila's king would be taking the h5 pawn and Lila would have not one but two pass pawns instead of a4. So that's not really a viable option. And the only other strategy is to create a pass pawn and try to uh, race against the a pawn with it. Which also looks very hard to accomplish here because, because which black pawn has the potential here of uh, becoming a passed pawn. The H pawn doesn't look like a good candidate because there's a king and a pawn in the way. And there's no time for this rook and the king to try to pick up these two pawns and clear the way for, for the H pawn. In the meantime, Lila's A pawn will just uh, uh, promote a million times. So there's no time for that. Luckily for black though, there is a potential for, for these two pawns, or at least one of them, to become a racer against the A pawn. But in order to do that, black has to somehow capture this d4 pawn and hope that uh, his c or d pawn will uh, promote faster than the a pawn. So one idea here is then to play king g5 and to try to play rook f4. f4 is currently guarded by the king. But the problem for black is that after rook a5 and rook f4, he's getting this pawn on, on d4, but his king is not very well placed for the race to come. The problem here is that once the pawn gets to a7, Lila has the possibility to move out the rook from the a5 with check and then push the pawn in. And uh, against that plan, these pawns are just too slow. In order to fight for this a7 pawn, black really needs his king to g7 or h7 and this rook behind the a pawn. So then maybe after rook takes on d4 and a5, the king could go to g6 and then to g7 or a7. And here now after a6, king g7, a7 and rook a4, it looks like the pawn now is stopped and uh, there are no tricks anymore with the rook and maybe these pawns can advance. But here Lila has a trump card and that is Freddy here on the f file. She can move the f pawn and for example, after something like d4, king f3, c5, f5, and c4, let's say, Lila has f6, disturbing this king's position on g7. And whatever the king does 
it will uh, allow Lila to promote the a-pawn. For example, if the king takes on f6, then there's this check, and then uh, just uh, promoting the pawn, and white wins. If instead the king goes to f7, then this allows now rook h8, with the idea to skewer the king and the rook on a7. After rook takes here, there's check, and then rook takes on a7, and white wins again. This is why the black king has to stay on g7 and h7 to not allow rook h7 coming from behind. And instead of uh, king f7 going to h7, of course, doesn't help again because this pawn goes in. So as we can see, this strategy with king g5 and trying to get this pawn with the rook doesn't work. But luckily for black, there is one more way. And that is to get with the king this pawn on d4. And then the king would be also shielded against checks from behind, thanks to the c and d pawns. And the black rook can uh, help in uh, stopping the a pawn. And maybe that way black can uh, fight successfully against the a pawn. So after rook c5, instead of uh, king g5 and rook f4, Scorpio played here king f5. But now after rook takes on a5, what is Scorpio's idea? Because these squares are unavailable to the black king. Well, he has this resource, h4, trying to force the king away from the defense of f4 and then invade to e3 and pick the spawn up. And if in this position Lila would get stubborn and play king f2 to guard the e3 square and not allow this king in, then Scorpio would have rook back to f8 with the idea of coming over, giving this check, forcing the king to the back rank, and then still coming in with the king, for example, rook a7, rook b8, a5, rook b2 check, king g1, and now after king f4, the king comes in and picks this pawn up, or even the king can go to g3, and Scorpio would be threatening to take on g2 with the rook with check. And uh, thanks to these threats, Scorpio would have a draw in this position. So king f2 is not really good. Best bet here for Lila is to actually take this pawn on h4, and this is what happened in the game and just quite simply give up the d4 pawn and then hope that uh, uh, one of these pawns will queen fast enough. Now of course Lila calculated all this ahead so she knew at this point that she's winning. The game now continued with king f4 and now we have king h5, king e3 and now g4, rook takes on f3 and g5, rook h3 check, king g4, rook h1 and now after g6, we have finally the king taking on d4. And now Scorpio has to move these pawns up the board as quickly as possible. Here playing g7, of course, would be a big mistake because of rook g1 uh, picking up this pawn. So instead of that, we have king up, helping the pawn to advance. We have rook f1 check, king e6, rook e1 check, king f7, rook f1 check. And now after the king hides behind the pawn, we have c5. Scorpio is pushing his pawns. We have g7 and now c4. And here king h7 might look tempting, trying to get out of the way. But uh, Scorpio would have rook h1 check here and then another check. And then another check. And if the king tries to hide behind the black pawns, then Scorpio could just play rook g1 again, attack this pawn and basically force the king back. So... Lila wouldn't be making any progress here with uh, king h7. Instead we have rook a8 guarding the queening square and now trying to, to hide with the king behind the black pawns actually works because after rook g1 this pawn could go in now defended by the rook on a8. But now after rook a8 Scorpio of course is also tricky and played here c3. And playing king h7 now would be a big big mistake because of c2 threatening to queen the pawn, and if Lila would now queen, then after rook h1 check, she would be losing the queen, after rook g1, king f7, and rook takes on g8, and then after rook takes, Scorpio would be the one uh, with the queen on the board, and of course winning the game. And if instead of uh, queening here, after c2, Lila would be playing here rook c8, trying to stop this pawn, well, Scorpio could still queen the pawn, because now after rook takes queen and rook takes rook, Lila could get a queen, but she would lose it again after rook g1 check and rook takes here. And now this king is uh, picking up the a pawn and the d pawn promotes and black wins again.
There is one more variation here of the rook c8 and uh, Scorpio queening. What if Lila is also queening in this position? Well, here again after rook h1 check, it looks like black is winning with a, a mate in 21 here with rook h6 check and then king f7 and queen f4 check and so on. Black has a mate in this position. So king h7 would actually lose here for white, but Lila calculated all this and Instead of that, she played rook c8, going behind the pawn and stopping it. And now Lila is winning. We have king d3 supporting the pawn, but now king h7. And after rook h1 check, we have king g6, rook g1 check, king f7. And uh, now if uh, Scorpio keeps checking, then uh, the king can hide behind the black king. And now after rook g1, just quite simply promote. And uh, c2 can be stopped now with rook c8. So um, rook f1 check here doesn't work. Instead we have c2, but now Lila promotes to a queen. We have rook takes and of course king takes on g8, d4, and now a5. And one thing is for certain, Lila will get a new queen, but so will Scorpio because it has two pawns. And we have now king d2, a6, c1 queen, Rook takes, king takes, and now after a7 we have d3, and Lila gets a queen, but she's winning just by a single tempo here. If it would be uh, Scorpio's turn here, then he could queen, and the game would end in, end in a draw. Also, if this pawn would be on c2, this would be also a draw, because the king could hide on a1 with a stalemate position. But... The pawn is on d2, so white is winning here. And the technique to win this is to force the king uh, to d1. And once the king is blocking the pawn, get closer one step at a time with the king. So we have now queen a4 stopping this pawn, king back, and now queen c4 check, king b1, queen d3 check, king c1. And now after queen c3 check, the king is forced to d1, otherwise this pawn gets lost. We have king d1 and now the king comes closer. We have king e2 and now white gives again a series of checks here. And once the king is again on d1, the white king can come again one step closer. We have now king c2 and now Lila has to rinse and uh, repeat until her uh, king comes closer to the pawn. Here we go, a check again and now king c4 king c2 and in this position the quickest win would be queen c3 check forcing again the king to d1 and then king d3 and after king e1 take on d2 and then force the king back and mate on e2 this would be the shortest win but of course Lila is trolling again and played queen b3 check and after king c1 she played king c3 allowing even Scorpio to queen here now, of course, the point is that if Scorpio would have a queen here, then uh, he would get instantly mated with queen b2. So uh, Scorpio promoted here to, uh, to a knight to defend the b2 square. But now he just quite simply doesn't have enough material to hold the game. We have now king d3 and after knight b2 check, we have king e2. And now this knight doesn't really have squares to go to and it gets lost. We have knight d1 and now queen takes on d1 and king b2, and uh, after a couple of more moves, of course, mate on a1. A very nice end game won here by Lila, with uh, Scorpio finding some uh, nice resources to try to hold the game. I would like to thank to René, Adolf, André, Pavel, and everyone who donated to my channel. Visit the store and check out two of my other games on the right. Please subscribe, like and share, and also ring the bell. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye-bye.